Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem, find the power of k size subarrays. We're given an array of positive integers, but the fact that they're positive isn't super relevant to this problem, but we're also given a positive integer k, which is a bit more relevant. For this example, let's say it's equal to three. So what we wanna do, is find every subarray of size k. So this is a subarray of size k. That's the one that starts at this value. And then the subarray of size k that starts at this value is going to be this. And we could kind of just keep going like this. And if k is greater than one, you'll get to a point where like the window that starts here is out of bounds. It doesn't have a third element. So we don't have to build these windows. Like these windows do not count. So of the windows that did count in this problem, it looks like we have one, two, three, four, five of them. And that's a consequence of the length of this, which is seven in this example, minus K plus one. So just substitute uh, this seven with like N, this is badly drawn, but N the variable, which represents the length of the input. But anyways, with each of these windows, we want to actually build an output array. So it's going to be the size that I just talked about earlier, depending on like the number of windows we have. So basically only these five elements have a window starting at them. So for this particular window, since it starts at this position, we're gonna put a value over here. We're gonna take the max value of the window, which is three in this example, and put it here. But we're only going to do that if the elements in the window are in consecutive order. Consecutive basically means that like they're sorted in ascending order and the difference between each of the adjacent values is one. Like obviously one, two, three is consecutive. We didn't have to start at one. Maybe we could start at two, two, three, four. That's also consecutive. 2, 3, 5 would not be consecutive because this should have been a 4. Uh, you know, 2, 4, 4, that's not consecutive either for obvious reasons. With that out of the way, what do we do if the array was not consecutive? Then we just put a negative 1 there, so pretty easy to do that. And a very important observation to make here is that if this array were to be consecutive, would we have to scan through the entire thing to find the max element? No, because we know that the rightmost element must be the max element, because if the values are consecutive and in increasing order, clearly the rightmost element is the maximum. So that's an important observation to make here. Now that we know what the problem is, we could solve this in n times k time. And I think the reasoning is kind of obvious with this visual because the most brute force would be, okay, start here, find the window starting from here. Okay, this is the window, like now I have it. Are the elements consecutive? We could determine that just by iterating over them. Yes, they are, so give me the rightmost element and put it here. Okay, now start all over again. Start all over again at the second element and scan through all three of these. Are they consecutive? Yes, give me the rightmost. Now I got four over here. I'll do it one more time. Now I'm gonna be over here, scan through all three of these. Are they consecutive? No. So instead of putting the rightmost element, we will put a negative one over here. That, believe it or not, is enough intuition to optimize this problem. Because generally for these types of problems, the first thing you wanna do is ask, is there any repeated work? Is there any redundant work? And clearly there is. At least it's clear for me, it might not be for you and that's perfectly fine. I would recommend coding this brute force solution up and maybe that'll help you come up with the better approach because the main problem is we iterated over the first window, the entire window to validate it, right? We would check the adjacent pairs. These are in increasing order. These are also in increasing order. Next, when we go to the next window, I'm gonna iterate over all of them again. Now these are relatively small arrays of size three. So really there's not that much repeated work. I mean, N times three isn't a big deal, but K could have been so much bigger. I mean, if it was exactly equal to N, that actually wouldn't be a problem because then we would only have one array. So I think in the worst case, we will have like if K was roughly half the size of the array, then the time complexity would be roughly proportional like to N squared. So there definitely is room for optimization. And the optimization isn't super difficult to arrive at. When you look here, you see, why should we have to validate these two? Again, when we are at this window, let me change colors. When we are here, 
why should we have to validate these two? We already did that here. We already made sure that these were in increasing order. So how do we remember that? Well, one way would be to have a variable called count. It tells us the number of elements that are in increasing order. So maybe when I did my first window like this, I could have counted, okay, they do have three consecutive elements and three consecutive elements is exactly equal to K. So that's why we put the three here, the rightmost element. Okay, now I have to do the next window. I could restart all over again, or I have like a pointer over here and I have a pointer over here right now for my window. I could just shift the left pointer first by one to be over here because I want to get rid of this element and then I want to shift my right pointer by one as well. So it'll be over here. So we will be looking at this window. We don't need to validate the count of this. We only need to do two steps. By removing this element, we want to know we're maintaining a count. It is three right now. So we ask the question by taking this element and removing it, Am I getting rid of one of the elements that was consecutive? Well, the way to determine that would be to compare this element with the element to the right of it. Specifically, we'd say, is this plus one equal to the element to the right? Yes, it is. So we actually are getting rid of a consecutive element. Update the count to be two now. Okay, but maybe when we shift the right pointer over here, we added a consecutive element. Let's validate that. Uh, just by comparing these two, we can determine that. Is 3 plus 1 equal to 4? Yes, it is. So we can increment the count back up to 3. And thus, this window is also valid. It's equal to K. So we take the rightmost element, put it over there. The reason this is more optimal is because we only need one operation here and one operation here every time we shift our window. So when we're here, now we want to go to the next window. Once again, compare these two. Okay, they're consecutive. Decrement the count to two because we're getting rid of this guy. We're adding this guy three over here. Should we increment the count? Are they consecutive? No. Four plus one is not equal to the element to the right of it. So we actually do not increment the count. So for this window, actually, the count is two. That's not equal to three. So thus we put a negative one here. Let's keep going. Let's remove this. We got rid of another consecutive element. So now we're down to one. When we say one, what exactly does that even mean in this context? Well, I guess you could say like this is the largest subarray that's consecutive, but it doesn't really matter as long as the count is less than K. You don't really need to worry about the meaning of this too much. But also note that the count should never really go below one because our subarray will never really be below one. The left pointer should never cross the right pointer. Now, once again, adding this element over here, this is not consecutive. So our count stays as one and we will add a negative one in the output over here. Uh, last window, we get rid of this. We didn't really get rid of a consecutive element. And then we added this, not consecutive. So once again, a negative one in the output. This is the final answer. We just optimized this solution from n times k down to big O of n, and we didn't need any extra space. So the space is constant. Let's code this one up. So when coding this one up, I'm pretty much going to follow like the exact same template that I do with sliding window problems. And I guess it's worth mentioning that this is a sliding window problem. These subarray type problems are commonly solved with a sliding window technique. So I like to have two pointers. I like to call it left. And then I have a right pointer that iterates however many times we want. We could do this length of nums. It will actually work, but we could also do the calculation I mentioned earlier, like minus K plus one. Actually, I think for this problem, we have to uh, iterate up until the end because we do definitely want the right pointer to reach the end of the input array, but we don't necessarily need the left pointer to reach the end of the array. And that stuff will actually be taken care of inside of this loop. Again, I think it's worth mentioning that if you are new to this, you can consider checking out Neatcode.io. Most of the resources are free. I'm talking about like the third pattern in this list. It's one of the fundamental ones, and it's actually one of the easier ones once you do get used to it. So don't like solve these problems in a vacuum. Keep in mind that they are very similar to other ones. And again, I mentioned like this template, like taking a brute force problem or a brute force solution and then optimizing it to a more optimal one is actually a very standard pattern. And if you're very new to this sort of pattern based learning, you can consider checking out Neatcode.io like some of the courses as well. If that's something you're open to, I do kind of cover most of these patterns uh, in like these courses. Everything is included, like the code, articles, animations, practice problems, and videos and all that. Anyways, back to the code. Remember that we do have a result array, so I'll kind of initialize that like this. We could declare the dimensions of this up front. We do know what they're going to be. 
I mentioned that towards the beginning of the video, but I'm just going to fill it in inside of the loop anyway, so I'm going to avoid doing that. And then uh, one more thing we're actually maintaining is the consecutive count. That's the main thing that we will be using to update the result. So consecutive count, like I said, it's never going to go below one. So I'm going to initialize it to one. And in this loop, what I really want to do is this, like if nums at right minus one, the previous element plus one is equal to the current element then we should increment the consecutive count. So that's a very simple thing to do, but it's easy to forget that right minus one on the first iteration of the loop is technically out of bounds. So it's not gonna give us what we want. So before you do that, add the check that right is greater than zero and than this. So this will only be evaluated if this ends up being true. So once you have that, there's two steps. I follow this template pretty much every single time. Like if the length of the window is bigger than K, we want to obviously increment the left pointer. So this is what we'll do, uh, shift the left pointer. But before we do that, we want the element that was originally there because we want to know if we're removing a consecutive element. So we do that very simple comparison. The number originally at the left pointer plus one, is it equal to the element that's to the right of it, L plus one. And in here, if it is, then we want to decrement the consecutive count by one. And then down here, we can say the same thing or a similar thing. If the size of the window is exactly equal to K, then we will potentially uh, update the result. Well, we definitely will uh, update the result, but it's gonna depend on what the consecutive count is. So if the consecutive count is equal to K, then we will append nums of R. Otherwise, we will append negative one. And of course, we could actually simplify this code and turn it into like a ternary operator. So I think it's worth showing how to do that in case there are some beginners watching this. So we will say append nums of R if consecutive count is equal to K, similar to what we did up here. Otherwise, we want to append negative one. So I'll do else negative one. This is how ternary operators work in Python. Um, I cover this in my uh, Python for our beginners course or the coding interviews course. I actually forgot which one. But anyways, this looks correct. So I'll go ahead and give this a run. And on the left, you can see that it works and it's pretty efficient. This is the most optimal solution in terms of big O runtime. There might be some like small optimizations you can make like to the code. Some people would say that that would make the code cleaner, but some people would argue that that would make the code more unreadable. So it's really personal preference. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.